I'm called Michael Chuberu Nagenda. I run multiple IT startup uh, tech initiatives in Africa. That is uh, Uganda mainly. That's where we started with Chipia, Nigeria, Rwanda. Um, and I'm glad to share with you about my work in the different spaces. My topic is uh, the future of the future of crypto is in Africa. I want to break it down a bit when we talk about crypto. For me, I've been working for top organizations in Germany, Deutsche Bank, Lidl, uh, Six in Switzerland, uh, also American corporations when it comes to big data. And Every time I walk through those organizations, I'm just standing amazed, looking at technology, looking at what impact, what transformational impact it does to different organizations. Um, we have seen different challenges in different organizations. Uh, when I'm at Deutsche Bank, it's partly security, other areas I can't talk much about. Uh, in the financial industry where I entered quite strong in the last few years, I'm amazed to see how technology is transforming the industry. I'm standing amazed when I'm in Africa. Looking at the third revolution where we went from steam, analog to digital, I see the potential of transformation, different technologies we have today at hand can do. When we look at the fourth industrial revolution, I call it transformation because revolution sometimes comes with blood and power change and I like to actually say transformation. The transformational power we have in the third and the fourth industrial revolution amazes me. Let's talk a little bit about it. In the fourth, I'm jumping a bit the third, but the third we have the internet. It's not more than hundreds of years old. We all use it day by day. Uh, we have um, different uh, shift from mechanical, basically to electronic, digital especially. Um, we have the innovation of the internet, inventing of the internet. That's just 1989, 2005. And the internet will look very ugly in the beginning. It was just a page and even updating it was, was I don't want to look back to it. I've seen it. As I said, in the third industrial revolution, uh, we moved from mechanic and analog to digital. In the fourth, transformation uh, with digital, big data, AI, artificial intelligence, internet of things, machine to machine. These are all key words, maybe not ringing bells immediately, but imagine a COVID lockdown without your WhatsApp, without your YouTube, without your Netflix, and so many other things that actually allowed us not to get mad. It couldn't help us maybe much to not add kilos, I added, <laughs> but at least you can imagine what it will mean without those technologies at hand. But the underlying technologies powering those, and I had the chance and the luck to see some of them in different corporates I'm in. But where are we in Africa? Let's talk about Africa. Today we talk about the global village. It's not anymore I'm coming from Namutamba, huh? I'm just a Ugandan, huh? Raised here. I left actually after, I think, 10. I was in Germany. But our global village is not anymore just the local village. Interconnected. But not just that. We have certain cultures. We have some certain understandings which is different from maybe other continents. Not just the village, not just the country but we're talking even in bigger context of Africa as a whole. So in, the dig in, our, in our village, let me call it, there's some different understanding. 
that we have. And I want to jump to now crypto more, uh, looking at that time. Um, while I want you to have that picture of decentralization, you know, in the village, one buys land, everyone knows this is the owner of the land. The knowledge not in one head, it is in different heads. In the village, we don't raise a child just by the mother and the father, not in our African context. We raise, actually, our children as a village. They can walk to the grandma, they can go to the uncle. Actually, the children call everyone uncle and auntie. Sometimes, with our background, with Europe, we say, ah, well, it's a challenge. Our children think everyone is uh, auntie. But indeed, we have that respect. It is different. And from that context, I want to talk about crypto. Crypto has made a lot of changes, and it started all with Bitcoin. About 12 years ago is when it was born. And with Bitcoin, different looks, different comments, different understanding went through their heads. One was, oh, it's all only for criminals. The others did not understand anything at all. <laughs> the other one called it uh, a scam. The other one called it, it will, just a child born will die. It's now 12 years over 12 years in the industry, and a total game changer. And that's what I want to talk about, a total game changer. Only years later, we actually learned what really Bitcoin is. In the beginning, understanding was not there. The underlying technology on Bitcoin, which we only understood later, is blockchain. Blockchain is more or less a registry book. Okay, peer-to-peer, -peer, distributed, cryptographically secured, append-only, immutable, means extremely hard to change. And it can only be updated when there's a consensus. What does that mean? These are a lot of keywords. We actually teach every second week, I'm teaching about blockchain, cryptocurrency, trading, and staking, and I can't do it all at once here, but I want to get you interested. Blockchain is currently the number one industry in the whole world. In the whole world. I'm a cybersecurity professional, but my interest shifted a lot to blockchain. It is a combination of different technologies. When you appear to peer, machine talking to machine, removing middleman, distributed all over, you kill one, they still find a way to operate. You can't stop it, at least very hard. When we talk about immutable, one time you've written in, it can't be removed. Imagine your birth certificate could, move, could be changed any other time, not with blockchain. Once it's written, it is written. I can only update. When we talk about consensus, that's when I come back to our African village. When the land is transformed to someone else, there's an agreement, a consensus amongst at least <laughs> two people, at least, but usually more than that. The internet enabled exchange of information. Blockchain allows the exchange of value. The internet, I write my wife, wherever she is, I update her where I'm going, my shopping list is sent by her when I go shopping, my WhatsApp, my what, my what, information, exchange, information. But I can't really, before at least, exchange value and share it like an SMS with someone else. That's what the blockchain enabled. More than that, blockchain is a trust machine. What does that mean? I told you, once it's written, it's written. There's a consensus. You can't change it. When I write it here in Uganda, it is almost automatically written in China at the same time. And that's why I'm standing amazed. Because I was working, for example, for Lidl in Europe at the headquarter. Lidl is like uh, Walmart or ShopRite, just a bit bigger than that. And the challenge they had was to write the store of all the products in the one uh, store and have it synchronized to the headquarter to know what to buy or sell 
the next day? What is overstock? What is where it's stocked? What needs to be done? I mean, there's so many decisions that have to be done. So they have huge databases. By then, they were like the biggest, the biggest uh, user of Oracle, which is a database. With blockchain, I, when I look at the industries, the technology, and I see what blockchain brings, I'm just standing amazed. Now, I want you also to be interested in this. Because it's not just a technology. It is a transformational technology. If we look at safe driving cars, they have data. If we look at university, they have data. Everywhere is data. We have to save it somewhere. We have to manage it somewhere. Not only that. Um, in Europe, they spoke a long time. I think London was one of the countries that really pushed it into um, open banking. That means you have your app here. You make a transaction to someone else, and it just goes nicely through your app. It wasn't possible before because the banks want the customer data, the banks want all the data, and they're the owner. Open banking says, hey guys, allow the fintech guys at least to access data. Fintech is financial technology, which my company is in. Allow them to access the data so they can do maybe some more smarter things. We need to transform the, that area too. Why they're still talking about it, <laughs> blockchain with decentralized finance brought it already in action. You can basically take your 100 Naira, 100 Ugandan shilling, $50, whatever, put them on a system, and the system will manage your money automatically. Can you imagine that? For me, I stand amazed when I look at it. We call it also staking. I'm just giving some keywords, staking. A few days ago, I bought uh, one of the um, new tokens. We call them tokens, not just Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a token. We call it cryptocurrency. Not every token is a cryptocurrency. So I bought one of the tokens and I staked it. And it pays me back about yearly returns of about 300%. A bank gives you about 0.75%. And then you're still lucky. So your money you put on the bank doesn't work for you. Blockchain, blockchain enabled applications do it. Lending is one of the technology decentralized finance allows. You can basically go on the system powered by blockchain and lend money. Do your, do your business. You should definitely also <laughs> do the payback. So in our work, what we have done, we basically train about five, uh, let me see, about 2,000 youth every year because I believe that if we don't take the youth on this journey, we're losing out. We had, I mean, how what call them what international universities. Youth started even was an exodus because they're learning what they cannot use in the market. You need to learn what is usable and important in the market. We company owners, CEOs, etc. We know what we need in the industry. So we train the youth. Every year we train over about 2,000 youth. We have different programs for that. As I mentioned, every two weeks, we're training them on webinars through the COVID, but we're coming back to physical very soon. We're building currently actually a location for excellence. IT, blockchain, cybersecurity, AI. It's still in the making. Why? To transform Africa, we have to do things different. The tools of yesterday cannot solve the problems and the challenges of today or tomorrow. So I want to get you interested to learn about technology, but specifically blockchain, cryptocurrency, tokens, decentralized finance, and much more than that. I'm available currently in Uganda. I've been in Nigeria for some time. As we're building also there, when the West and the East. I'll be happy to take you on a journey to understand what this technology enables you to do. It is transforming every industry in the world. You know, a plane is built, I don't know about how many billion pieces. Bill, uh, millions, maybe not billions, but millions of pieces. They have to be monitored. Where are they to be ordered? You put them in a database to make sure when they arrive there, we know they have arrived there, we're missing this piece, we get the quality is not good here, we record it, etc. That's a supply chain 
and they're becoming more and more complicated. Today, when you order on Amazon a book, it is going to be printed. That is printing on demand. It is delivered. Very highly complex systems behind it. Even a machine is there to pick the book and put it in the box to ship it to you. Now we're, buying, now we're building drones. Why are you using the roads and traffic and all that drama? <laughs> Why not use a drone? Flies over air, delivers straight at your house, house door. That is where it is going. But all that smartness, data exchange, is utilizing digital money. I'm working with different governments, we're talking to different ones, to actually look into removing this, this cash we have and put it into digital. Rwanda is working on a digital Rwandan franc. Uganda has some, pro, uh, some, some developments, or at least conversations. The Europe is bringing out their own. We have created the biggest trading zone in Africa. But how are we enhancing the technology to allow us to do it in a transformational way, in a way that Africa benefits from it. Yes, I hear it all the time. We are poor, we don't have this. We have potential. Our youth is our potential. Our resources is our potential. But we need to do what it takes to get there. So I always say that if you don't move, <laughs> you'll be moved. If you still think living in a cave is the best, you are missing out. So we need to move, we need to change our mindset, we need to accept the changes, we need to do that extra action to actually be part of it. So I want to end here, and I want as I'm ending to amaze you, to make you interested, to be part of this transformational shift that technology allows. You can open a YouTube and learn about it. There's been events here at this very location. So this, we have such simple access today to knowledge. I don't know where we ever had it. So I want to amaze you and get you interested for it. Thank you very much.